And as we get ready to finish up this, man, it's just exciting to see company coming, yes. to know that they're coming, yes. that we get to take care of them, yes. that we get to bless them, we get to be a part of their lives. And I think some of those are looking forward to being here as well. Yes. And when company is excited about coming to your house, that makes it even more the better. Because you don't have to struggle to entertain somebody if they feel comfortable in your house. You don't have to strike up a conversation and try and figure out a conversation. All you need to do is let them kick their shoes off, feel right at home, and then you can host them greatly. And there's no struggle. And when they come here, we want them to feel no struggle, don't we? We don't want them to have to worry about nothing. So... What we do today is even if we took one last night is, and I want to tell you something, you cannot outgive Amen. God. Amen. Amen. I know you've heard it a million times, and if I could go into details, I would, but I can't right now. But you cannot outgive God. It is virtually, it is impossible to outgive God. You can't do it. You can't outgive him with your time. You can't outgive him with your finances. You can't outgive him with your praise. You can't outgive him with your worship. Because the more you give to him, the more he gives to you. The Bible said, blessed, it's better to give than receive. So if you're giving, you can't outgive God in anything that you do. If you try to outgive him in your worship, he's going to bless you even more. You try to outgive him in your finances, he's going to bless you even more. I don't think I've ever worried about a meal in my life. Never. I may not have had a brand new pair of shoes every time I wanted a brand new pair of shoes. But brother, I had shoes that didn't wear out. Yes. They kept going and kept going yeah. and kept going. Yeah. Blue jeans that didn't wear out. Yeah. Now they're cutting holes in them because they want yeah. them. Mine got wore. I wore the holes in my blue jeans. Yeah. And my mom and daddy wouldn't buy me another pair <coughs> until those were completely done. Mama would go in there and put a little square of them patches in there and say you can wear them a little more, son, because the seat's still intact. Now we can put holes in your knee and fix the knees of your britches. So we never went without. We had shoes, we duct taped the bottom of them and went to school that way. It didn't, it was okay, it did. It was embarrassing then, but it didn't kill me. But God never let us go without. We had food on our table, shoes on our feet. Just like you, church, every time you think that you're going without, God will show up every time. So the deeper you dig in your pocket, the deeper you dig in your spirit, the deeper that you dig in your heart, God will not outdo. You cannot outdo God in any manner. Because he is an ultimate God. Listen, I want you to know the more today, and I'm done. But I can promise you that what this church is doing for you, you can give back yes. and you will be blessed. Yes. I promise you. Yes. Our pastor and these ministers and these elders, these senior elders that control your finances, they are not doing it selfishly. They are giving greatly and abundantly so you can have a place to worship. Yes. You can have a greater place to worship. Yes. We're not worried about sawdust floors today. No. We worry about a little bit. Sometimes we get upset because the air conditioner ain't just right. Or the sound's got a little squeal in it. But we're not sitting out somewhere heating to death or freezing to death because we have given, this church has given to God's people abundantly over and over and over and over again. When the man of God said, I want to quit, he didn't quit. When the woman of God said, I want to just stay home and quit, they didn't stay home and quit. They dug a little deeper so you and I could have a place today. So, brother, two of you brethren are ready tonight. We got this figured out, I think. So we're going to outgive God today. We're going to do our very best to outgive God today. I did see a sign the other day that bothered me, and you, brother, can help me. But I've seen a church sign that says, name of the church was Making Jesus Famous. 
I didn't really think we needed to make Jesus famous. Did y'all? They're making Jesus. The new church was making Jesus famous. One of the greatest men that you can talk about, one of the best-selling books in the whole United, all, all over the world, is the Bible. One of the greatest, you can be in the middle of turmoil and say Jesus and the world will stop. So you're going to try and tell me that we've got to make Jesus famous? We've got to give no. God will do anything. He is a not an impossible God so today you reach and I promise you God will bless you back hallelujah you got a checkbook you can get a checkbook if you don't mom's got one we'll get one let's make sure we out we, we give our best today we love you God bless you come on let's give him a hand clap of praise before we do. let's give him a hand clap of praise before we do. hallelujah and here's another thing pick up your offering if you have it in your hand I'm going to do something a little different, Pastor. Pick up your offering. Praise We're going to pray over it. Amen. Because this is God. In the name of Jesus, this is your offering, Lord. I don't give it selfishly. I don't give it in any manner. But, Lord, I give it gracefully. I give it gratefully to you. I don't ask it back in return. But, Lord, you cast your bread upon the water today. Lord, and we're believing that you will bless it for this church and the use of this church. And Lord, we thank you for it. Yes. And in Jesus' name, we all said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, ain't God good? Give us so many blessings undeserving. That's what we are. We ought to thank Him. Love and praise Him a little more today. And a whole lot more tomorrow.
while you stop. Praise God that you the Lord.
Brother Lube said we took Marlow Airlines over to... <laughs> and uh, it was exciting. It was quite an exciting ride there and back. And uh, we had to unleash the horses to get there and back. That MKZ does that very well. But, uh, Brother Ray Linegar used to say, uh, the scripture said, Lo, I am with you always. <laughs> so if you're going to fly, fly low. <laughs> but, uh, I, I so appreciate all of you from here to the very back. And my, I want to commend you for adapting and being able to change uh, positions environment surrounding the last three weeks. You've done so well with it. And let the Lord come in and bless anyhow. And bless us good. And, uh, I know that you can't see in the very back uh, as you might with the floor range different, but I appreciate you being in those hard chairs in the very back. Steel chairs. Several sitting in steel chairs back there. And then these chairs are not comfort zones either. They, they're not comfort zones, and we want you to know we don't intend to keep you in there any longer than we can get into that sanctuary. And it's looking up, it's shaping up. It's really beautiful in there right now, even even in the finishing stages. But it can be so much better for everybody in every way. And I thank you for giving and for helping us to get it in the shape for the convention. And uh, it's looking really, really good. These men of our church. Uh, we're blessed that we didn't have to call a general contractor. Amen. We have a general contractor and general contractors in our church. We have more than one. Brother Matthew Knopf is a licensed contractor. Brother Matthew, uh, Mike, uh, Michael Van Heining is a contractor. Brother Terry Harrison's a contractor. Uh, and the Joel Zonneville, of course, uh, did the whole license. I'm sure he does now. I know he works for the AC. Company still. There's several men in our church. Today. Brother Richard Han here, licensed electrician, um, and uh, we, we, we're blessed to have uh, painters and plumbers. And by the way, we want to remember Brother Lee Wallace. I miss him today. Yes. I miss Brother Lee Wallace. He's uh, been very sick, very ill. And we want to remember Brother Lee and ask the Lord to help him lost his voice completely here during the week and not feeling good at all. But God can help Brother Wallace. He has helped him. He can help him again. And um, <coughs> Sister Jan, we want to pray for the rest of God's people. God's doing a lot of things yes. for us. We just keep praying. And like uh, Phyllis said, the doctor said it wasn't there. It wasn't there. And I'm saying to Sister Morris, I told her on the phone, I said, Sister Morris, you will never die of a brain tumor. It isn't there. In the name of Jesus, rebuke it. And re you don't always have to accept. You don't have to accept everything a doctor says. Respect a doctor. Thank God for doctors. I admire their knowledge. I'm so glad they're in existence. I've used doctors um, and used them again if the Lord would allow me to do that, but they do not have the final word. They do not have the final answer because the Lord is still the governor among the nations. And uh, I believe the spirit of the Lord was all over Sister Morris a moment ago here, and God has touched her again and again. And then I thank you for uh, putting up this inconvenience of the restrooms back here. There's only one single unit for the ladies and one uh, single for the men, and that's an inconvenience to the uh, size of the church we have here. But we'll soon be back in there yes. and uh, to your uh, places where the church is arranged uh, for you. And uh, so just keep your heads up and everybody be of good courage and uh, be of good strength. and. Um, I, I know I, I love the way that God's people give and have courage to give and keep giving 
and then bearing and forbearing and loving one another, even as the church should. Um, I, I love the words of Paul the Apostle. It's in um, Ephesians. I can quote it, I believe, but I don't want to misquote anything about it. Uh, in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and the 29th verse, I believe. Let's look real quickly. And I'm not going to be on my feet that long because God has used others today, and I thank God for it. And I'm going to even watch the Spirit while I'm standing. And if there's someone else that had a song on your heart, or a praise unto God, or a personal testimony, I'll get your eye, you get mine, and even in the closing minutes of today, I would relinquish my time to hear the people of God glorify Him and give Him the glory and the vision. Uh, the um, fourth chapter and the closing verses of that chapter, uh, it said uh, in, uh, in verse 30, uh, the fourth chapter, verse 30, and grieve not, and grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby you're sealed unto the day of redemption. Now, let me give you another scripture to go with that. It joins right in with it. Paul said in Ephesians 1, the first chapter, this is the fourth chapter, but jump back to the 13th verse of the first chapter of Ephesians. In whom you also trusted, so we must trust God, and we are trusting God. After that you heard the word of truth, the word of truth. Thank God we're hearing words of truth in the church today. In whom you also trusted after that you've heard. I'll tell you, you can't be in a service like we're in this afternoon. And some of you are sitting here hurting in your bodies. How many have experienced pain since you've been in the building? Amen. Dealing with some condition. See that? But you're still in that chair, aren't you? And we're nearing 4 o'clock. But you're still in that chair. So thank God you trusted the Word of God. And even though you are suffering, it will not always be that way. Amen. You have a promise of deliverance. You have a promise that He will never leave you. You have a promise He will never forsake you. So you have trusted, and the Scripture said, in whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also, after that you believe, after, after, isn't that remarkable right there? Yeah. After that you have believed. believed. That's a very important part sure. of theology of Christians. Believing is an important part right. of your salvation. Believing. And whom also, after that you believe, then you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. I, I don't see it being done very much now, but my Aunt Nora Bash used to uh, can a lot, preserve a lot. And my goodness, she would cook that and cook that and cook that and then put it in jars. And once she sealed it, it was to stay sealed until it was open for the meal or for the food thereby afterwards. But it was sealed and no, nothing could get in that, uh, those preserves. As long as that seal was tight, it could sit on those shelves, it could sit in that pantry day after day after day after day because it didn't need any refrigeration. Uh, no refrigeration needed. It was sealed. It was sealed. And until it was open, uh, nothing would disturb it. Did you know that you're sealed that way? Sealed. You're sealed, Sister Marilyn. You're sealed with a Holy Spirit of promise. You're sealed with the gift that God gave you. You're sealed with the talent God put in your life. I want to speak a word right here. Many of you have gifts. Some of them are in writing. Uh, Brother Dale Wilson back there in the very back. Uh, hold up your hand, Brother Dale, where everybody can see where you are back there. Brother Dale Wilson, since he's been in the church, has encouraged me time after time by just obeying the Lord. And he'd write down some things. He would go back and research of uh, dispensations. He loves dispensational time. 
Uh, he loves uh, history. And he would drop me off a paper. Sometimes I wouldn't have time to hardly get it on my desk. So I'd say, I'll read it a little later, Brother Dale. Or then he'd drop me by a painting. He loves to do little paintings and sketches. And uh, they're, they're, uh, they're alluding to the Lord and the coming of the Lord and the promises of the scriptures. Uh, well, that, that's, a, that's a gift that God gave that individual. Yeah. Did you know you're not to put your talent under a bushel, your light? Uh, neither do men take the candle and put it under a bushel, Amen. Jesus said. What is your candle? What is it that burns all right? Then the second thing to that is being willing, no matter how talented you are, what gift God has put in your life, to be sealed with that, and then have need of patience. See, uh, Second uh, Peter chapter 1, Peter said we're be partakers of his divine nature. Yeah. And, and in that divine nature, he said we're for giving all diligence, attention. That's Second Peter, isn't it? One. Yes. yes. And yes. to your faith. Virtue. So a Christian begins to multiply. Immediately, when God calls you, puts you in the body, brings you to the truth, brings you to the body of Christ, you have a candle. You have a light. And that light will shine if you don't put it under self-light, the bushel. If you don't put it under your self-light, the bushel. But you're willing to bring it out. And you're willing to not hide it. And you're willing to be embarrassed a little bit. If you get up to sing a song and suddenly you can't think of a verse. I, I wanted to quote scriptures and I, my mind went blank. Yeah. I yeah. got up to preach and my voice cut off. And I stood there. I was before uh, 2,000 people in Houston a few years ago in the old tabernacle, airline. And I got up to preach and I couldn't do anything but stand there and cough and sputter before 2,000 people. And uh, uh, the devil said to me, you're done. Your reputation is shot. Uh, nobody had ever heard you stand up here want to hear you again. Uh, but you know what? I was sealed. I was sealed. I had, a, I had a promise from God that if I would do it again, if I would sacrifice again and be willing to suffer even embarrassment, even some humiliation, it was good for me. And my gift just gained ground. And God helped me. And time after time, I didn't stand up and sputter. But time after time, God used me to bless hundreds and thousands of people. Yes. See, you, you've got a gift. You've got a, you've got a candle in you. But don't, don't, don't let your self light cover it up. Uh, don't, don't, neither do men take the candle and put it under a bushel. But they bring it out. It can light up. You're sealed. 